and we went right to work on Florida, whether it was the film sessions, whether it was the court, whether it was uh, getting ourselves ready with what we want to do offensively and defensively game plan. And, and I think their attitudes and energy levels and all those things have been outstanding. And Christian Brown practiced uh, more today. So hopefully he'll be available to us tomorrow. Yeah, coach, uh, uh, I just wonder, you know, kind of the, the unpredictability of the SEC. I mean, just seeing what Florida did the other day against Tennessee, and they had a bunch of guys out. And uh, even you guys, does is, is it seem like an even more predictable, unpredictable of a season than, than they always are, I guess? Well, I think, I think it's just the year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think what it shows with Florida – when you take out two starters with Scotty Lewis and, and Colin Castleton, it just shows how deep they are. They might be as deep as, and as, as, as consistently deep as anybody in the SEC. And um, I mean, they just, they just keep coming at you in waves. Mike has done a great job of building that program over the years now and, and, uh, and, and, and putting a lot of talented guys in there. So there's not much drop off if somebody's out or when they go to the bench and they just keep coming at you in waves with their pressure because they want to create turnovers. They want to create issues for you. They get great spacing. Uh, he can play a lot of different lineups, like I said, because of that depth. So he can go with two bigs. He can go with uh, a, a small ball uh, four man. He can go with three guards. He can really mix it up. And so the unpredictability is, is strong. And, and I think it's it, it, what happens and it's happened to us. You can, you can lose your, you can lose your spirit quick in these games and you just can't allow that to happen. And, and, You've got to be able to, to be in a position where you're continuing to fight back and understand how long the games are. And that's easier said than done uh, in this type of year, in this type of pandemic year. But, but, but that's what you have to strive to do in these games. And I think that's why you see some lopsided scores, because some people struggle with that. Us included. Us included. Thanks. Next, let's have Mark Weiser and then Mike Griffith. Tom, uh, with Tumani, I guess the last couple of games he's been uh, pretty good with, with the fouls. Uh, where do you see his game in terms of, uh, you know, what are you looking for as, uh, you know, you guys hit the towards the midway part of the SEC schedule? Well, we need him, we need him to be aggressive. You know, we're a third of the way through right now, so we, we really need him to be aggressive offensively. We need to, we need to find him more. Uh, he needs to keep being aggressive on the glass. I think he's got to focus on going stronger in his finishing. And, um, and the, the ball just needs to move a little bit better, but he's a very valuable guy. He's doing a lot of really important things for us, but there's no question that we need to, to, to do more for him to get him the ball. And he needs to do more in the sense of cutting, moving without the ball, being ready to shoot. And then when he drives really going up uh, with some, with some strength and force. Coach, I know there's some, some staples every game uh, for this Georgia team, offensive movement and rebounding the two things you stress uh, consistently uh, against Florida. Um, what are some of the key matchups? I mean, as far as what they do, what you need to do particularly well against this Florida team, as far as individual matchups or like key attributes of the game. Well, yeah, just like a couple of the keys to the game. Outside well, they're of so good with their pressure. We got to take care of the ball, right? We, we cannot be giving them live ball turnovers. I mean, they really, really want to force the tempo. I mean, they, they play as many different defenses as anybody in the league. You know, whether it's a 3-2 zone, a 2-3 zone, a 1-3-1 zone, full court man-to-man -man run and jump, zone pressure, they can switch. I mean, they just do a lot of stuff. So, and it's, it's to confuse you and it's to get you off, off, out of character. You know, we can't let that happen. We've got to do a good job of controlling the pace of the game, recognizing what's there, making simple plays, and, and, and you, they're just too athletic to give live ball turnover. So I think that's paramount. I think how we defend the post especially if Castleton is back to go with pain is going to be really crucial, much like it was the other night with Kentucky and their spacing is as good as anybody's spacing. I put their spacing up there with Alabama's and Arkansas. I mean, they just do a great job of really staying true and committed to their spacing. So, um, and with Scotty Lewis back, we can't be in a position where we're over helping or overplaying because he can back cut you to death. So uh, I think that stuff is, is, is important, but it really goes back to the same things. It's the rebounding. It's the movement without the ball. Um, it's not letting Trey Mann get really comfortable in the game. It's not leaving Noah Locke. It's understanding that Appleby is instant offense. Um, they're not going to put anybody out on the court that can't make plays. So every matchup that you have, you've got to honor it. You've got to honor it with being alert, aware. And uh, then when the shot goes up, you've got to find him and hit him. Okay, let's have Davis Baker and then Jed May. 
Hey, Coach, it seems sometimes in college basketball, like grad transfers can be hit or miss. This year, it seems like you really hit with all three. Are you surprised at all at how well they've all been able to play together? Well, they're all good people. I think they're all good people, and, they, and they, um, they've been well-raised, and, and they've all got their own story, right? I mean, and, and how they've been raised, and, and uh, we're very fortunate in that. And you're exactly right. It can be hit and miss. And the last thing you want is an independent contractor. And, and I think in this day and age, it's very easy for that to happen because it's, and it's going to get even more prevalent, you know, obviously with, with grad transfers and with transfers is the rules change here uh, eventually, but uh, it's really, really important that they come in and, and, and I want them to understand how important it is that they are at Georgia, not just because they're playing basketball in the sec, but because of what kind of education this gives them, what, what, what kind of institutional memory this school has. Um, the, the, the level of when you go someday in this workforce and you've got the University of Georgia behind your name to go with what you already had, that's a pretty impressive thing. But uh, all three of them have done a really good job of, of blending in, not making it about themselves, being locked into the team. And, and I think they really are excited about the fact that they're getting better. Uh, hey, Coach, uh, following up on that a little bit, you've mentioned a couple of times this year about Severe, Justin Kyer and Andrew Garcia living together um, just – as, as people, what, how has that benefited the benefited those guys, both with Justin and Andrew being in a new place, getting acclimated to a new team and with severe, I guess, sort of being around older, more mature guys. Uh, I think it's good. You know, I, I think it's good. I, I think, uh, I think where I'm heading with this is I'm not going to let, I, I like the way they're together. I'm not going to let guys live uh, with, with non-basketball players anymore. And, and um because it's just, it, it, you, you need that camaraderie, especially in a situation like this this year where you have so many new guys, it has been so different, you are so isolated. I think all of that is, I think all of that is good. And I think it's really, really hard to find ways to make sure that your team has got camaraderie the way things are laid out. You don't want them out and about a lot. You don't want them in a lot of different places and because it's just too risky right now with the way the world sits. So when they are together like that, I think that's really, really important. And, and um, I, I think I've learned my lesson on, on if you're going to be on the team, unless it's a really, really unique situation, you're going to live with your teammates because um, it's really important that they get that extra time because it just builds bonds. And then that carries over to the court and from the locker room and things like that. Okay, and the last question, we're going to have Griffin Callahan. Uh, hey, Coach. You guys have an edge uh, in assists so far this year over Florida. Is ball movement something you're putting an emphasis on going to this game? And uh, is that something uh, maybe you can use to your advantage uh, that maybe they don't move the ball as well? No, I, don't, I, I didn't know that. I never look at comparison stats because it really is – those are all those have no variance on what we're doing. And, it, and I think they're one of the better ball moving teams uh, around. So I, th those are just their statistics. And that doesn't really tell a story to us at all. And, and uh, we just need to move the ball uh, at a good rate and, and make sure that we're cutting and moving and ready to shoot. And that's what's most important to us, because I know they're going to do the same thing. All right. Thanks so much, coach. Thank you guys. Thank you. Sorry for the delay again. We just, we, we practiced, I got to get these, this timing, right. But, and then we just had a film session. So they'll, uh, the rest of the guys will be here quick. Okay. Thank you. And Jumani is actually here. So he's going to get it started for us. All righty. Um, first we're going to start with Anthony Dasher and then Mike Griffith. Hey, Tamani, good to see you. Sorry about that. Um, I was asking Coach a while ago just the importance. Now that y'all got a little bit of momentum going, how is it important is for you to kind of keep that keep that up now? I mean, it's going to help us a lot already to have two wins on, on the belt already. And uh, we just need to keep a positive mindset on that. Be able to keep the same speed, the same motivation we have. We've been doing, like, the last two games. So I think it's going to be – it's easier for us to like go to another game after a win than after a loss. So I think it's 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 gonna start the train in a certain way for us. So it's gonna be good. Thank you. Hey Tamarin, uh I know you probably you got your history lesson on the, the first win against Kentucky in quite some time. Now you guys have a chance to win three straight in the league. That's 
that hasn't been done in about four years. I mean, the, the things that this team is doing, did you foresee this being a team that could have this sort of a, a breakthrough season? Yeah, I believe so. I, I believe it took us just a long time compared to the other teams to just find ourselves better. So I think uh, every game we started learning by each other and by the team. Uh, so I think we're we coming along like way more on the court and outside. So everything is, is, is going like it should be. It's like we, we were just missing a couple of pieces of the puzzle. Now we got Katie back. So I think everything is going in our favor and we just need to keep going and keep having a positive mindset. Okay, let's have Davis Baker and then Mark Weiser. Uh, hey, Tumani, now that we're pretty much, you know, well into SEC play, uh, just, you know, how much more comfortable over the season have you gotten with playing the five? Um, Playing the five, I mean, that's that's most likely the position I played on last year. So um, being able to be versatile and be able to play outside and inside is something uh, I think it showcased me a lot. Um, it's something I'm able to do guard guards and guards guard big. So I think just... Yeah, just being versatile is just really important in my game, sir. So, Money, what, what have you been working on, uh, like on the practice court with your individual game? I know uh, in SEC play, you had a couple of games where, where you had dealt with some foul trouble. What, what, uh, what's been kind of the daily thing that you're trying to get better at? Foul trouble is definitely something I've been working on. It's just um, being able to be smarter, um, not, not too aggressive, being able to know when to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive. And also my, my free throw, I think it's something I really need to work on. And uh, I, I just believe it's a, it's a mentally thing because I practice, I make my free throws, I make my threes. I just think I just need to be more confident and be just be positive about everything and just play my game. Thanks. Okay, and the last two questions, we're gonna have Griffin Callahan and then Jed May. Hey, Tumani, what are you doing as a team uh, these past few days to make sure that you can build on the last two SEC wins and you know, continue to improve on play in the conference? Like Coach says, it's, it's always about the next game. So we're trying to get on a one-game streak uh, every time. We're not, we're not really focused on the, the game that we just played in the, the past day. So we're just going on to the next and stay positive and trust each other and trust what the, the work that the coaching staff is putting uh, the game plan and everything. So it's basically that. And then if we play like ourselves, I, I believe we can be anybody in the league. So it's, it's going to be very interesting. Hey, Chimani, um, this is obviously the second year you've gone through the grind of an SEC schedule. How much, I guess, do you feel like you're holding up better physically this year through, I guess, six SEC games than you did last year? You know, Do you have a better feel for the physicality of this league night in and night out? Oh, yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Last last year, I, I, I think I did a pretty good job physically, even though it was like my freshman year and I had to kind of like guards every big and, and every team. And it was like Nick Richard and Wiley and everything. It was just like kind of hard physically. But I feel like even if the man in front of me is stronger, I feel like I can be faster than him and I just can adapt and kind of like be smart in a certain way. So it just matches it both like physicality and, and being smart about it. All right, thanks so much, Tamani. Thank you. And we're gonna be joined shortly by Justin Kyer. First, we're gonna start with Anthony Dasher and then Mike Griffith. Hey, Justin, good to see you tonight. Uh, in what ways has the last two games, I don't know, enabled the team to maybe kind of take a collective breath just from the standpoint of playing more relaxed than maybe I were earlier on? Yeah, um, I think we had to take that huge breath. Um, you know, we had to settle down. And I think um, these last two games, um, we may not have shot the ball well, but we've moved the ball a lot more. You know, we've played a team game. Um, and I think, the you know, the games that we've lost, not didn't, we didn't play a team game, but I think defensively and offensively, you know, we kind of had some individualism. Um, and... We, we know we can compete with anybody when we play as a team and we play the right way and we lock in on defense. And um, like, as you've seen the last two games, we might not have shot the ball well, but our defense was on point and, and, and we try to do that. Um, we're going to try to continue to stay focused on the defensive uh, game plan 
um, because you never know how good you're going to shoot every single night. But that defense, you can control every single night. So that's what we're, you know, we've been trying to do um, is just to mature on that side of things. Um, you know, that rough start kind of hurt us a little bit. So, you know, we're just trying to pick that up. Thank you. Hey, Justin, I know you guys won't play Kentucky again this year, so I think you're free to answer this one. Calb, after the game, said that, that they basically just threw you guys the ball 20 times. Is a, is a guy that, that's, that makes these steals, that makes these plays, do you, do you take a little offense to that? Because it looks like there's a little artwork and preparation that goes into your steals to me. Um, I mean, I, I, I won't comment on, you know, what he said, but um, I do think we, you know, we scouted pretty well. Um, I think we, you know, the plays that they were running, we kind of knew. Um, and that's, that's just basketball, you know. We, we, we go through film and scout and, and things like that. Um, and just with stealing the ball, you know, it's just anticipation. So, um, you know, there was just, I don't know. I just, you know, that's, that's how I've always played. I've always anticipated, you know, being aggressive on the defensive end. Um, and last night, you know, it just, it just helped us. So, no, I, I just think, we, you know, we, we locked in on the defensive game plan. Um, and I think that's why we got it done. Quick follow, if I may, when you get a steal, I've seen you lay it in at times, but then I've also seen you dunk it. How much of that adrenaline comes from just knowing somebody you got in your hip? I mean, could you dunk it every time or is that just kind of a when it's necessary kind of move for you? Yes, sir. Um, I think it just feels how, kind of how I'm feeling on the court. Um, you know, with my lay, my lay in the other day, uh, the other day, it's just, you know, if we have, if we have a crucial stop or we need a crucial stop and, you know, we're, we're down or, you know, I'll, I'll lay the ball in just to make sure we get that bucket. I don't want any miss ups. I mean, missing a dunk or any stuff like that. But also when you see a defender near you, um, a lot of these guys in SEC are, are very athletic. Um, so that just means, you know, I have to finish this play and, you know, say we lose by, you know, one or two. Those are crucial plays, you know, if you end up missing those uh, those layups. So um, I just do what I got to do to make that play. Um, no, I don't I don't like question. Oh, I'm going to dunk it or not. If I see a guy, you know, I'll, I'll um, try to elevate as much as I can dunk it. Yes. Um, but it just depends kind of what's going on. OK, let's have Davis Baker and then Mark Weiser. Hey, Justin, I asked coach the same thing, but uh, it seems like this year uh, you PJ and Andrew Garcia have all just had uh, some great success. At times, you've all been the best player on the court. Uh, what is it about Georgia that's allowed you guys all to be so successful this year as grad transfers? I think it's our maturity and the, our willingness to want to win. Um, we come from, you know, well, you know how PJ is a PJ is probably the most winning is player on this team, um, coming from you know Buzz Williams and Virginia Tech, um, but also you know me and me and Andrew come from, you know, being the best player at our former school. Um, maybe not won as many games as PJ has, but, you know, we know what it takes to win. Um, and I feel like that's just kind of the maturity of uh, us three. Um, you know, we know this is this could be our last year. Um, you never know what's going on. This could be our last year. And we, we're going to fight every single night um, to improve and, and, and to represent Georgia. Um, and I think Coach Green has done a great job and the whole coaching staff, but Coach Cream, Coach McLean have done a great job of just, you know, letting us know, like, you know, we never need to step our foot off the gas, you know. And, you know, there's going to be guys who, who do. Um, and I was in that position when I was a freshman, sophomore, um, and everybody in college basketball, you know. So, like, um, just being a graduate student, I just feel like it's that maturity level. Um, if you come out, you can't really have bad games. Um, and if you do, um, you still have to impact the team. Um, if you have a bad game offensively, you got to impact the team defensively. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of what we're focused on is just winning and doing what we need to do um, to fulfill, you know, what we want to do this season. Justin, you said that anticipation is kind of a key factor for, for these steals. Are, are you uh, better at anticipating uh, to, to make those steals than you were earlier in your career? And uh, is there anyone uh, like an NBA player that you kind of uh, grew up liking in that regard in terms of a guy that stole a lot of play, you know, passes? Uh, I've, I've always been pretty good at reading passes. Um, just, you know, when a defender or when a, um, you know, either with the scout and we watch film, I watch a lot of film. So with me watching film, you know, I'll sometimes see the play before it even happens. I'll see, you know, I see what play they're running and I'll know what's going on. I don't always like to jump the gap just because if I do miss the, uh, miss the pass that gives, that puts my team at a disadvantage. Um, so I, I do try to pick, you know, the ones I know I'm going to get. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just studying the game. It's studying the game, studying other teams. Um, I've always been pretty good at that. Um, and I've been, you know, watching films since I was in high school. So 
Um, when you watch that much film and, and, and we do as a team as well, um, and we go through the plays physically, um, I kind of just can can know which ones I can maybe get. And but I don't always go for it. You know, I don't always go for it just because I don't want to put, you know, if I do end up missing it, that puts my team in a bad position and that's selfish of me. So um no, I don't I don't always know, but um I just feel like if you're aggressive and 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 you study the game mentally, it, it makes the physical part ten times better and ten times easier. So okay, and let's finish up with Griffin Callahan and then Jed May. Hey Justin. Uh what have these last two games done for your confidence uh, in your team? Uh, they were two very different games, but they both ended with wins. I mean, it just shows that when we play the right way, we know we can compete with anybody. Um, and, and, and I think guys have, are eager and, and hungry to continue to do that. Um, and I know coaches and I know our staff is, um, but I think guys know what we have to do to win and, 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 you know, we've lost, you know, the first four and it, it kind of, you know, was the was the knockout punch for us. Um, but now we're back up and we're fighting. So we got to continue to fight um, every single night from now on because we dug our dug a big hole at the first four games. Um, so I think it's just, you know, the grit and grind and guys that, that we want to win. You know, it's not about, you know, individualism and all that kind of stuff. We want to win as a team. We want to, you know, and we, we see how much fun we have and we see how much, you know, how good the vibe is when we are winning, you know? And um, even if, you know, we we play hard and the outcome doesn't, you know, isn't what we want, as that's, we we know when we play hard and when we don't. And the games that we, some games that we have lost, we've known like, you know, it just doesn't feel the same, you know? But like, you know, y'all seen the game at LSU when we played really, really hard and lost at the end, we knew we competed. And that's the difference between losing a game like that and then losing a game where, you know, you could have controlled it and it just got out of hand. Uh, hey, Justin, sort of on that similar topic of what has allowed you got grad transfers to succeed, how much has it helped living with Andrew Garcia and Severe Wheeler, you know, especially living with Severe, a guy who's spent a year in Coach Crean's system and everything like that? And also just off the court, what are those guys like as roommates? Yeah, uh, we're best friends. Um, me and Severe are really goofy together sometimes too goofy and he brings the, the the kid side out of me just because you know he's also a sophomore and 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 the spot you know other than how mature he is on the court which he is he's very mature on the court you know we have our fun we have our fun and, and we joke around a lot um and then Andrew you know he's he's just in the mix with that as well um so we're all best buds we're all best friends um and I think that um carries over to the court um and we know you know that's I think we're the well, obviously PJ, but, you know, I think we know that switch, you know, that on and off switch on, you know, when you can have fun and then when it's time to lock in. And I think, you know, with these two being my roommates and, you know, us living together, hanging out all the time, um, we, we, we realized that really quickly before the season even started that like, you know, we're all mature and we all watch, you know, watch the games together and, and watch film together and stuff like that. But we know when it's time to lock in and all the goofy stuff goes away. Um, so that's just the best thing about that is how you can have two, best of the both world, best of both worlds um, with them to just, you know, having fun, you know, off the court. And then when we get on the court, you know, taking it serious and, and um, you know, improving the season. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much, Justin. Thank you, guys. And that's it for tonight, guys. We'll have a transcript to you shortly.